Hello, all my participants and organizers. First, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me a chance to share the exciting result of my project. So my name is Chien Polo, and I'm a PhD student from Chalmers University of Technology and also currently ESO studentship student in ESO Gaki. So the title of my presentation is I'm building a multi-scale view of massive star and cluster formations. So the, present, the outline of my presentation is as follow, which is first give, I would want to give an introduction of my project. And I want to go a little bit more detail about the isolated massive star formation in G28.2, negative 0.05, which I will dub as G28 from now on in four different aspects. And I would like to give a summary uh, in towards the end of my presentations. So massive star, which have mass, mass at least eight times heavier than the sun, a rare but play significant role in earlier stage, the radiative heating and outflow inject a vast amount of momentum energy into the interstellar medium, which can regulate further star formations across multiple scales. And also the vast rich chemistry also enrich the chemical content of the interstellar medium. The evolution of massive star has been summarized with main step on the right here. We can see that one of the major steps is supernova, which is not just the synthesis of heavy elements, also during supernova explosion, it will disperse and redistribute these materials into the surrounding environment and impacting the next generation of stars. And also the shock wave will stun the surrounding environment and could also potentially trigger new generation star formation. However, there are still many open questions about how massive star form, like what are the process recreating massive star formations? Is there a simple theoretical model to explain massive star formation, which still remain to answer. To really tackle this question, we need observation as they ultimately confirm and confront existing models of massive star formation. So here we want to present my project, which is aiming to understand the formation of massive star and star cluster by observations. Here is the classical picture of Loma star formation, which is foundation of some massive star protostar theory developed by theorists. So for this very developed by Shu et al, which is involving four main phases, which is including the formation of molecular clumps, which within the dense part of the clump, which form the pre-stellar core, which is gravitatorily bound, and as it collapse, the angular momentum is conserved and leading to the formation of a Christian disk. And this disk creates continuous channel material in, and, with, and the formation of the first protostellar objects will transit from the pre-stellar to the protostellar core phases. As these phases and the core and the protostar continues to evolve, the outflow emerge, and also the protostar starting to analyze the surrounding materials. And finally, we will leave the young star in the middle with a protoplanetary disk. Two main theories actually have been proposed for the massive star formation, which is much more complicated. On the left is the co-accretion model, which is essentially a scale-up version of the classical Loma star formation picture. While on the right is the competitive accretion model involve a larger scale and environment and more chaotic mass accretions. To do this, we actually we need observations. And one of them is the SOFIA Massive Star Formation Survey or dubbed as the SOMA Survey. It survey a large sample of massive pearl stars with SOFIA 10 to 40 microns across a large range of mass, environment and evolutionary stages. And a subset of these sources has been followed up with high resolution VLA and ELMA observations. So the source G28 is also a sources within the SOMA survey. And on the left here, we first see the species 8 micron survey and the source is located in the center of this square region embedded within a filamentary infrared dark clouds. Infrared dark clouds are known as the progenitor of massive science, massive star cluster. And on the right here is the Herschel 70 micron image of G28 with a roughly region covered by the square here, and we can see the compactness of this source. To really resolve and to characterize the properties of this source, we need high resolution data. And ALMA is the prime instrument for this project. So to do this, we are carry out ALMA basic observation with three different configurations across a resolution of 0 0.8 to 0 0.026 arc second. So here we first study the ELMA continuum image, which on the left we show the compact and on the right we show the complex but intermediate. As we involving longer baseline data, we can see the detailed structure involving this arc-like structure. 
We will also include the long baseline structure. We actually weight the different configurations and then we combine them using the contact function in TASA. And then when we clean, we apply it all the, with the brick and a weighting of 0 0.5. And we have the interactive manual masking using the multi-scale deconfolver for both continuum and line imaging. Here we show the combined final continuum image with a similar size beam of 0 0.036 times 0 0.06 arc second and continuum RMS of 0 0.17 milligrams per beam. We immediately see this ring-like structure with a radius around 2000 AU, assuming a distance of 5.7 kiloparsec. So first we want to study the morphology of this continuum image and we identify three continuum beats and the details are summarized on the table on the right. And we also search in the archival data and we find VRA 1.3 centimeter data and we overlay the VRA data in the black contours on top of ELMA data, which is in the color scale. We can see this striking similarity in morphology, but with some shifted. And the shift information is summarized in here as well. So we understand the shift. We actually first find the magnitude and the position angle. And we take in the time difference between the two observations and find a proper motions and infer a velocity. And from this, we compare with galactic proper motion, assuming a rotational curve, we find a relatively consistent similar velocity. Therefore, here we only argue that the shift between the VRA and the LMA is due to the large scale galactic orbital motions. So we nonetheless apply the corrections and want to characterize the mechanism of the emissions. To do this, we need to study spectral index, which is defined by these equations. So the index is also the slope of the spectral energy distribution. And here we show an example of the H2 regions. Here for optically thick cases, the slope will be, or the index will be smaller or equal to, and in optically thin cases with a lower limit of negative 0.1, which is compared to thermal dust emission, which is have an index of three to four. So here we do, do this, we really want to do a pixel by pixel analysis. So we will grid the ELMA image into the VLA grid, and then we do a to do the index analysis. And, we, and from here, we can see that mostly the values are close to zero. And therefore this allow us to argue that these emissions are mainly due to free free emissions. But we also see there's some enhancement in the Flexural index towards the continuum peak. So this may hint that there may be this region where the embedded protosa is has been resided in. So the increase of this spectral index beyond the ring like structure may be suggesting residing in a dusty envelope, but the low signal to noise does not allow us to have this solid interpretations. So we also do this, but with the average spectral index by taking the integrated flux within a 0 0.5 arc second radius from the continuum peak, we also including two other VRA data at two different other wavelengths. And here report the spectral energy distributions of the average flux. And we do a fit and we find a spectral index of 0 0.118, which is, inconsist which is consistent with the pixel by pixel analysis. Therefore, the emissions is largely due to free free emissions. We also infer the dust mass by taking the difference between the 1.3 centimeters and 1.3 millimeter flux. And using this equation, we get a dust mass of around 30 solar masses. So we also want, other than the continuum image, we also want to study the chemistry and the gas called core environment. Hot core is a manifestation of massive star formation where the strong radiation from the protostar heat up the surrounding material, unlock material to the gas and form complex molecule. And this hot Molecular core relatively warm uh, for 100 Kelvin or higher. And for embedded protostar, also ionizing the surrounding gas to H2 and the recombination between the ionized hydrogen and the electron will lead to recombination lines. And G2NA actually is also known as a shell like ultra compact H2 regions. Here we show the ELMA moment zero map image of two high excitation lines. And here we can see the distribution mainly peaked to next to the main continuum peak of the black contour, which is the continuum image. So from here, we can further suggest or hint that the massive prototype will be reside within the main continuum peak. We actually applied a dynamic estimation by taking a, in the, the average spectrum of two from the um, 0 0.3 arc second radius from the main continuum peak and we applied a variable analysis, we applied it we find a dynamical mass of 84 solar masses. We also apply the same analysis towards the recombination line, but we find 
a significantly higher mass, which is at least 20 times higher than the dynamical mass inferred by the, these high excitation lines. We also find this very interesting strong metastatic gradient from the Woman map of the recombination line. And we interpret this result by a launching of ionized disk wing from the massive process embedded within, which is supported by some simulation studies such as Tanaka et al. 2016. We also studied alpha morphology here. We identified large and extended wide outflow with the 12 co 2 to one And also we find this single side outflow from the SIO5 to four. And then afterwards, we also want to understand the protostellar properties of the source. So we, to do this, we apply SDD modeling. So on the left here, we take the full SDD of G28, which is showing the from wavelength of the mid infrared involving SPISA to far infrared involving Herschel. And here we show again the ALMA and the centimeter wavelength with, from VLA. The SDD is the flux as a function of wavelength or frequency. So here to do the fitting, we only involve the data with mid and far infrared. And then we perform the fitting taking using the Jiang and 10 2018 grid model based on turbulence accretion model. Here we're showing all the fits include color code by the chi square. Using the best fits, we are able to constrain some of the protostellar properties. Here we show the three main parameters, which is including the stellar mass, we found to be a 24 solar mass, source with a reside in a massive dense core around 400 solar mass and a clump mass surface density of 3.16 gram per centimeter square. And finally, we want to understand the large scale fragmentation of the source. To do this, we applied astro dendro package, which is essentially taking a threshold and then going from the peak and then for a constant step going up, which is from the peak level will be the leaf and then going all the way down to the fresh noise threshold that defined by us, which is then the base structure is defined as trunk and all the intermediate structure are defined by the branch. Here with this criteria, we show the result of the dendrogram of the compact only and the compact plus intermediate continuum image here. The black contours show all the leaf structure only. And from the con compact con continuum image, we only identify five very limited fragmentations. Despite more fragments has been identified if we involve the intermediate, but we see that all the fragments are reside within five X seconds from the center. This corresponding to around 0.1 parsec scale, which is essentially all fragments are reside within the core scale of the source. So the absence of any fragments or study out beyond the 0.1 parsec suggests that this source could be forming in a relatively isolated environment. So here, that's just the summary of the project. So here I present a high resolution ALMA study of a massive protosar G28. We characterize the morphology of a ring-like structure and based on spectral index analysis between the VRA and ELMA data, such as emissions are dominated by free free emissions. Evidence of dust presence in and around the ring will be with follow up with high resolute frequency observation will be needed to confirm this. We also have dense and warm molecular gas are detected toward the region, and we apply dynamical mass and estimation with 84 solar mass within a 0.3 arc second radius scale. We apply this to also the recombination line. We identify also a very strong velocity gradient, which we interpret as a trace in the ionized disk screen. And we also apply SED modeling using the SPISA to Herschel meet to far infrared SED data, uh, SED, and suggest a massive protostar of 24 solar mass in a massive dense core of 400 solar masses. From the dendrogram analysis, we actually have shown evidence showing a massive protostar form in a relatively isolated environment. Complement last year's study with single dish and mosaic ELMA study will provide further constraints. And other type of data such as parametry and high resolution gas kinematics will allow us to really investigate the rough turbulence and magnetic field. And finally, I would really thanks the attention that we actually could, this result uh, could potentially be an example of massive star forming in isolated environments. Thanks again so much.